Hi, Stampers. It's Lisa. Welcome. Who's ready for today's live? Today we're working on a slimline card. I don't know if you guys have heard of these before. They're, they've been pretty popular recently. Uh, they are three and a half by eight and a half. And what that means is that they fit into our standard um, size 10 office envelope. But today we're making the card and then we're making a pretty envelope to go with it. This envelope I made out of the designer series paper that matches and it would just slide right in here and you'd be ready to mail. So who's ready to get started? Hi, Wendy. So I'm going to bring in what we need to get started and then I'm going to put you on my desk. You can see better if I do this, right? <laughs> okay, this is what we're doing. Is this card right here. And I haven't done the inside of this one yet, but we will. And then the coordinating envelope that goes with it. Now this card is made in using this Santa's Express Suite. Now, you all know I love a suite because it gives you everything you need. In this suite, you can order it by this one price, one number, but you would get not only the bundle, which is saving the 10% by buying the stamp set and dies together, but then you'd also get the embossing folders, the um, ribbon that goes with it or trim, some um, adhesive backed sequins, uh, memories and more cards, your pre-cut envelopes. This would, and um, in card bases, it would make card making super easy. And then the designer series paper that goes with it. So that's on page 16 and 17 of your holiday catalog. But I've got our designer series paper here eight and a half by 11. I just kind of cut it down. I think the directions I found, they were making it easy if you wanted to start with just a sheet of cardstock, but I thought it'd be prettier if we did it in the designer series paper. And then this piece, as I said, the card's going to be three and a half by eight and a half. So this is seven by eight and a half scored at three and a half. And then for our layers to go over that, we're going down a quarter of an inch for each layer. So this one is three and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and then three by eight. And I've got one for inside and one for outside so that it will match. We're gonna be using the Santa's delivery stamps. It is photopolymer. So I'm gonna bring those in. I'm gonna actually stamp the second one twice so that we get in with two train cars. And you could put various things in here, but I wanted to show you how I did the penguins because I have a little trick for how you get them to be inside the cart. Welcome everyone, good to see you. Um, okay, I'll do the envelope later. Let's start out with our card base. And I always like to get little pieces out of the way that we're not gonna be stamping onto. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere my green layers. And I'm going to do one inside, one outside. And then we'll have our white left to stamp onto. This just kind of when I'm on camera keeps me from losing pieces. If they're already glued together, that's just one less piece I can lose right here on my desk, right? Okay, so here's our inside and our outside. And I'm going to stamp in Memento Black ink because we are gonna be coloring with the Stampin' Blends. Thank you for sharing to Facebook. I really appreciate that. Anytime you guys can share or like or comment, it always helps me out in the algorithms, which is basically Facebook or YouTube's kind of deciding factor as to whether or not people would find this interesting.
And I'm just giving it a little bit of a wiggle this time to make it look like it's kind of bouncing along on the tracks. I have a little bit of a goof here, but I think I can fix that. If not, we could always turn it over and stamp on the other side. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now remember everyone wants to type in hashtag prize patrol. That's going to be your way of getting a chance to receive this card in the mail. Okay, is that a little better? Okay, now the dies actually come with track. The coordinating dies that come with this, of course, cut out several things on the stamp set and that it cuts out, you know, the, the train, of course. Um, and then there's also the top of the, the tree that's going to go on top. The packages have one. The penguin has one. The smoke has one. Um, just all these little things cut out various pieces of the stamp set. But not only do they cut out pieces of the stamp set, but they also cut out the designer series paper, which of course is out of my reach right now, but, oh, here we go. One of the sheets of designer series paper is filled with the train and the little car that goes behind it. And these are just die cut directly out of the designer series paper and then adhere to my card. So I've got my mountains back there are cut with the basic borders dies, which I'm always recommending that people have. And then I've got them um, stacked on there with some dimensionals to give it a little bit of pop so that there is one snowbank back here and another one up here and they kind of slope in different directions. And then I've got my train track and then the Santa's train on top of it. And this too is some of the designer series paper. So just another idea, if, you know, this is a little too much coloring for you, you can easily just cut them straight out of the designer series paper. That's always a plus. So like I said, I'm going to bring in some stamp and blends. And I'm going to bring in a stamp and write marker. And I want a ruler. because I'm going to draw our train track. Okay, so I want to keep this on a, a line of my grid paper and keep this on the line so that I know the line I'm drawing is going to be straight. Oops. If I don't wiggle my fingers, it will be anyway. And I'm just drawing kind of between the tires or wheels. And then I'm going to come down a little bit and I'm going to do a second one. Not much room here. Didn't quite go all the way to the end. All right. Then I'm going to do our cross members. Now I'm just guesstimating, you know, how far apart they would be.
All right, now for Santa, I'm going to go ahead and color his hat. And then I'm going to start with his outfit. And I'm guessing the underside of all this is going to be my shaded area. So I'm going to do that with the dark. Then I'm going to come in with the light and fill the rest in. This is one of the things I absolutely love about our Stampin' Blends is how quickly you can do this shading and make yourself look like more of an artist. And the pens do all the work for you. I don't know if you can see from a distance, but up close, see how it's got kind of the shade to it? I love that. Okay, so for the tires, wheels, whatever these are. I'm going to put the dark on this side. And you kind of just want to decide what angle your light is coming from and then have your shading, you know, fall equivalently. So did you guys do anything fun this weekend? I actually left the house. <laughs> it's kind of a shocker. I went somewhere other than the grocery store. Um, if you check out my Instagram profile or my Facebook, you'll see that I did a story, you know, the Facebook stories or Instagram stories on where we went. We went to the art festival over at Thousand Springs over near Hagerman. And Thousand Springs is a place in Idaho where supposedly there's a thousand springs that come up out of the ground and there's just waterfalls everywhere. And on this place called Ritter Island, which back in the day used to be a dairy, they had a whole bunch of pop-up tents and vendors who were there selling stuff. And we kind of walked around and there was a hay ride and there were canoe rides and um, we took pictures of several of the waterfalls. It was really pretty. And then the water out there is crystal clear, which I absolutely love. So I don't think I'm going to color the whole thing, but I wanted to show you guys some tips on coloring it um, and how I put the penguins in there. So for the penguins... I stamped those by masking over the inside of our thing. What do they call these? Train cars. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my little penguin and I'm going to have them popping up out of there. And see, when I take away the post-it note, the bottom of the body is actually looks like it's inside the train car. And then of course we have our little smoke plumes. So I'm going to do these in smoky slate. And for the most part, I did most of my coloring with the skinny end, just because it was kind of small little pieces.
And then for our penguin, I did his beak in pumpkin pie. And then I did his body in basic black, only part of it, because remember penguins have that white belly. Now, of course, if we had the whole penguin, he would have feet too, and the feet would be orange, but in my penguin anyway, they would be orange. You can color them whatever color you want. And one of the things I saw on Pinterest was somebody had actually heat embossed the train in gold to give it kind of a gold trim, made it look very Christmassy. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because if you have trouble staying within the lines when you're coloring, that's one of the things you can do is heat emboss the image and it helps you stay inside the lines because there's a ridge right there. Okay, so when I colored, I colored the little banners and I went in kind of a reverse. I took the dark and I did the tops of these ones. And then I did the bottoms of the other. So I'm doing the dark and then I'm going to come back in with my light and go right over the top. And again, we're going to get that shading. Then when I did the green, I went in reverse. I did the dark down here. And like I said, I'm not saying this is the end all of how you have to do everything. I'm just pointing out how I did it. That's the fun thing about stamping and coloring and all the paper crafts is that you kind of get to do your own thing. You get to have fun with it. Okay, then when I did the, the train car, I again took my dark and kind of started at the top and then figured out where shadows would be. And I'm just doing red and green on this. This is cherry cobbler and old olive. I've actually done this train several times in a bunch of different colors and it always comes out cute. And you've heard me say before that I go in small little circles over where it overlaps, it helps it blend. Like I said, I'm not going to do all of the coloring, but I wanted to give you guys a good idea of the shading that's possible. 
just using the Stampin' Blends. I mean, and I didn't do anything fancy. There was no skill involved. <laughs> I just colored. Getting it currently and not end up watching two previous shows. Okay, I'm a little confused. Um, it looks like you're watching on YouTube. Um, one of the things you can do is turn on live notifications on YouTube and it will actually pop up with something that tell you tells you I've started to go live. And you should be able to just click on that and go straight into it. Also, the link is up there ahead of time because it says there's an upcoming live and the link is already there. So I don't know if you're clicking on that and you get something else before I actually go live. Not really sure, but my best suggestion is turn on notifications and then click on that notification when it goes live. If somebody else has suggestions, we're all, all ears. We would love to see how you do it. <laughs> yeah, see, the, the heat embossing helps you stay within the lines. It's kind of neat that way. I'm just going back to make sure that I don't have any comments that I need to, or questions I need to address. Mm -hmm. If I do, I apologize. I will go back and look through them later. Um, just trying to catch things. Okay, so then we can do the inside. We can decide what we want to do that. We can, you know, have some penguins, you know, floating around there. We can do a little strip of DSP on one side or both sides or along the bottom, along the top. Just decorate this up however you would like. <clears throat> and then your inside sentiment, of course, would go in there. It's this one I already have. Um... See how cute that would look over there? And it kind of takes up a little room. Then you can put your inside sentiment and maybe some things popping out of the corner over here. There are several little stamps. You could do the, the sign or maybe some presents. Um, maybe even the train car heading back out. You could do the back end of one of those. Um, and then I didn't really have enough room to do a full, you know, sentiment um, punch. And so what I did was I punched out of some scrap. I went ahead and stamped in cherry cobbler because that's the color of our base. And yep, here's our sentiment. It's looking good. I just re-inked that one. It was very light earlier today. And then I'm going to go ahead and spray it with our Stampin' Mist. And it starts to help dissipate the, the ink. And then this side of my Stampin' Scrub is wet. And then this side is dry. And I always try to get the red ink off as soon as I can because no matter how quickly I do it, they still kind of stain a little. It doesn't affect the way they stamp just bugs me. That's a personal problem. Hmm. Yeah, I go live every Monday and Thursday at 2.30. So it's pretty consistent. Occasionally I'm maybe four or five minutes late, but... Um, Oops, let me undo this. Now you can see my sentiment. <laughs> and then I'm going to take another piece of the red. Now you saw last week what I did is I cut this down the middle and I had some peek over the top and some peek over the bottom. But we're only going to do part of this. So all I need to do is the bottom part. And I'm going to use liquid glue for my oops, wiggle room. Okay. 
And then I could trim that off with the snips or if I'm less confident about my cutting straight, I can come in with the trimmer and I usually start above. So I'm pushing into my little ledge. Oh, you can't see. Um, if I start with my blade up here and come down, the ledge will stop it. But if I come from the bottom and go up, there's a chance it will wiggle a little bit. So there is the sentiment and then we can pop that on right there. And I even can have it go over into the green if I want a little more room. And then I'm going to give this a little bit of a pop. See, and that allows me to put the sentiment, have the little shape of the label, but not overwhelm my project. So, of course, that'll look much cuter when I finish coloring it. But then you can see down here, I also have a little bit of snow. And I did the snow using the puff paint. We have this Snowfall Accents puff paint. And it's very... Um, liquidy, is that a word? <laughs> it's very liquid. It's um, runny, kind of. And so I try to put something that's going to hold my card. Because it's the top, I don't want it to pop open. So I'll just stick a block on there. And then I'm going to come along. Ooh, that's a little too much. and just run a bead. Now see, this is why I'm pointing out how liquidy it is. And I gave it a little bit of shake ahead of time and I didn't wait for it to calm down. So there is some little bubbles in here. But then once you have the liquid on there, then you come back in with your heat tool and heat it up. Okay, so I had a little bit of a goof, and that's, again, I'm trying to point out to you guys how, what's the word? It's not liquidy. It's, it's very thin, and so it tends to move back and forth, 
And so I had to move the heat tool from like different directions as it tried to blow it. And I wanted to stay kind of, you know, warm it up so that it was enough that it wasn't going all over the place, but then letting it puff. And it does take a little while, but it comes out really great. Um, it works good for the trim on his hat, his beard, um, snowfall out of the air, the puff things could be, I mean, anything you need puffy, um, marshmallows, snow, you know, anything. This stuff works great. Like I said, I'll show you the finished one. Just be forewarned that it is very thin and moves a little when the heat tool starts blowing on it. But you want to leave it on there long enough that it puffs up and it's actually 3D. There we go. There's a good look at it. So that's our card. So let's move on to the envelope it's going to go into. I know you all want to see how I made that. Oh, and have you guys noticed, did you see in my newsletter, I'm actually doing kind of an online event. I'm calling it a stamp camp. It's kind of an online retreat sort of thing. Basically, you would um, register for the event. You, there are three different levels. You can get it just the bundle and the pre-cut card pieces for what we're going to be making during the event. That's 69. For 79, you get some additional DSP and some extra little things. And then if you do the $129 version, you actually get both of the bundles. We're going to be using the, here we go, the Lights Aglow Suite for the retreat. And we're going to be mostly stamping with the Christmas Lights Bundle. And I'm doing it with a demo from Canada. I'm going to do three cards. She's going to do three cards. And then we're going to do some 3D projects. But you will walk away with 12 cards and a bundle by registering. We're taking registrations now. Um, you won't have to pay till October 6th. That's when we're going to close it out. Um, but it would come with this bundle, the Christmas lights bundle and all your pre-cut pieces, and of course the exclusive Facebook group, you know, all the things that go with that. Um, and then for adding on the DSP, you would get three six by six of each color, or, you know, one of each color, one of each color, six by six, and then half a sheet, of, half a pack of this gorgeous um, Lights of Glow bundle. That's for 79, you get that. And then when you add up, go to the 129, you get the second bundle. And we're throwing in a free pack of the beads. So something fun for those of you who felt a little jealous that I did that retreat and you weren't local, this is a way that you can participate in an event. And we'll, of course, be going live and doing a mystery stamping event and playing games and there's prizes and, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, it is even welcome to other Stampin' Up! demonstrators. You just would need to pay the registration fee. And if you already have that bundle and you want something different, you can substitute for something of the same price range. So I'm bringing in my Simply Scored to, uh, scoreboard. And it comes with a stylus that has a fat end and a skinny end. Now, the reason it has the two is the skinny end actually goes down into the groove. The fat end kind of rides on top. And so when scoring designer series paper, I always suggest you use the fat end because the skinny end can rip the paper and we don't want to do that. Um, would a gummy racer take care of the oops? Oh, the little where I went off the corner. This here. Yes, a gummy racer would take that off. Yes. Okay, so for this, like I said, I'm starting out with an eight and a half by 11. It can be designer series paper or cardstock. I'm looking over at my chart <laughs> so I don't do this wrong. I'm going to score at two and a half. And then again at six and a half. Okay, then I'm going to rotate it. And then this is going to be the top of the envelope because I want my pattern to be right side up. So I want this to be the top. So I'm going to come in at one and three quarter on this side. And then it's just going to be a half inch at the bottom. 
So not that that's overly important, especially if you're not using a de designer series paper that has a direction to it, but um, that's one of the things you wanna watch out for. You can, because our designer series paper is double-sided, you can use either side as the outside. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Of course, we wanna come in and Burnish with our bone folder. There you go. So, what should we have on the outside? The packages or the dots? I just kind of burnished my score lines so I kind of know where they are because we're going to, of course, cut down a little bit. So I need my paper snips. There we go. So I'm going to start by taking off this top corner. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, and then down at the bottom. Now this is how we would get started on any kind of a box too, as we're creating our flaps for how it's gonna fold up and adhere. Okay, so this is to start. Got a little half inch down here, the two sides and the top. You can see I was a little straighter on one side than the other, so I can easily come in and straighten that out. Yeah, that's looking a little better. Okay, now the bottom's going to be easy. I'm just going to go ahead and wedge this. Then I'm going to use my tear and tape. Okay, looks like dots are kind of the winner for what's going to be outside. It would look cute both ways. Okay, so I'm just going to fold this over and adhere it. I mean, you can't hardly tell. And then down here, we're gonna seal this up. Okay, and then we have our flap, but this looks kind of, I don't know, a little boring, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is come in and make a little mark. And trim this up a little. So again, this isn't totally necessary to do this. I just thought it would be fun to um, just give it a little bit of a style to it. Let's come in. Um, and I'm just guessing. None of this is exact science. But 
but I'm going to come up just a little bit to this one. And then I'm going to come up this one. Mm. I don't know if you can even tell, but it's kind of got a little more angle here. And sometimes when I'm not quite getting the sides to match, I'll save the little piece I cut off from this side and mirror it over to here and then trace with a pen. And of course, we can corner round it. If you have your corner rounder handy, that's probably easier. But see, that just gave it a little bit of style. Nothing fancy, but... If you wanted to leave it just square or just corner around the ends or do a normal angle, it's all up to you. No big deal. Like I said, there's no stress in stamping, so don't let things wig you out. But here are our envelopes, and here's our finished card, and here's our card we were working on today that I will finish coloring. And apparently I didn't burnish with the bone folder. Do y'all see how that was popping up? I think that needs some burnishing. So what do you think? Who's going to try to do the slimline card? Yes, it is. It's a great way to use up designer series paper. I also have another version that I want to make the card in a box. I have um, a pattern for doing that as an envelope as well. So that's today's project. That's all I had to share with you was this. And to remind you, please go sign up for the um, online stamp camp. Should have grabbed you a link. Let's see. Um, here's, if you go over to my Queen Bee Creations or Stress Free Crafting with Queen Bee Creations, my Facebook page, then you would see the little graphic about our Christmas Lights Aglow online stamp camp. And then right in that description over here, this is the form you would want to click on to. And it's going to open up the registration form. Like I said, there's no money required right now. You would just go in and fill this out. As you start filling it out, it's going to ask you if you're in Canada or in the United States, and it will adjust your pricing and all of that um, equivalently. And then here's the section where if you already have that bundle, you can choose for something else. But that's all due by October 6th. And then the actual camp is going to be on the 29th. So the Saturday before Halloween. Because we want to make sure that we have all of our cards ready because Christmas is like right around the corner. It's scary how quickly that's coming up. I, I, we just got into fall. I mean, it was just 100 degrees like yesterday. But, uh-oh. Did you lose my voice when I was doing all of that? I realized I took away my face instead of my desktop. So hopefully you guys heard what I said and know how to go find that graphic and register for the Christmas lights aglow. Has everybody put in hashtag prize patrol? Because I'm getting ready to spin the wheel to see who the prize winner is for today. We have 11 entries so far. Oh, good. <laughs> Panicked me a little bit. Every once in a while, my, my, if I take my face off, if I choose to take that out of the stream, my microphone goes with it. So I'm glad I didn't do that. Thank you. So let's find out who our winner is. Oh, and I have next week's card, too. Or next week, next Thursday's card.
There we go. Gloria is today's winner. Congratulations, Gloria. I'm sure you know your way how to find the claim form, but I want to point this out for those of you who are new. If you win Prize Patrol, there is not a button on my blog. You have to go there and, and type in slash prize patrol after the queenbeecreations.net. And it will pop up a Google form that will ask you for your address and where you would like your prize mailed to. So congratulations, Gloria. And then the new card. Let me get you my desk back. I know you want to see the card, right? Okay, so this is the one we did today. Thursday, when you come back, we're going to be using the same bundle, but we're going to do a sidestep card. Isn't this cute? And I, I love these trees. These trees are awesome. They have these little lift things to them that gives it some texture. And they're part of the trimming the trees dies. There's two different sizes, a little one and a big one. And of course, many other dies that come in that set. But these trees can be used with so many different things. And those dies are only available through the end of September. So you want to make sure you hop on over and grab those dies if you like them, because they're going to be going away soon. And there's also the weekly deals that we're doing. We're on our very last week of the weekly deals and Thursday is the last day or no Wednesday. I think the 28th is the last day that you can actually save and get some discounts over there. So that's what I'm going to be doing on Thursday. I will see you back here then. Thanks a lot. Bye.